If you're not paying for the product, then you are the product. Well, if you don't believe me, then just try and remember, have you ever paid for anything on your social media? Did you pay to open any social media account or to consume unlimited content available through these social media accounts? You are virtually living your life on social media, but unlike the real world, you don't need to spend a single rupee. Unless, of course, you buy a physical product through social media. So how are you paying for all that you enjoy on social media? through the new age currency of the future, your data. Hello and welcome to India Today Digital. I am Anjali Istavar and I will help you understand how priceless your data is. How many times have you been foxed by the bombardment of ads and content related to something that you were just talking about in a group of friends? Even before you think that you need to buy something new, your phone or laptop knows it. I'm sure by now you understand it well enough. This is surely not a coincidence. In fact, this is artificial intelligence. And it is this artificial intelligence that helps your phone to listen to what you say and inform the big companies of what you like or might buy, if persuaded enough. So how does this entire system work? What exactly is this artificial intelligence that is commonly also known as AI India Today Explained has all the details for you. Let's begin with understanding artificial intelligence. Well, to put it simply, AI is a computerized intelligence that functions or tries to function similar to a human mind. Your AI, as in the one you are carrying in your pocket in the form of your phone, is trying its best to think exactly like you. It is observing your habits and your likes and dislikes. In short, it is profiling you to understand you better. It's simple. How is it that your phone can predict what you wish to write in a text or a message when you just type two or three letters of a word? Well, your phone's keypad helps it understand your language and your comfort. What words you usually use, in what context you use them, and how many times you use them. All is being observed and noted. An analysis of all this data helps the phone give you automatic suggestions via its predictive dictionary. Now let's talk about the platform you are using right now, YouTube. What you see in the morning or what engages you in the evening may be different, but all these nuances are registered with your AI. According to your content consumption habits, it will suggest you new videos. So your habits are the ones that are making the AI smarter and more accurate day by day. Now let's talk about the obvious thought that is niggling you. Well, I'm assuming it's niggling you. Can this data be stolen? And even if it is stolen or shared, who in the world is actually interested in my likes and dislikes? Or my habits for that matter? Well, the big news for you is that your data is priceless. And all the big social media companies and many businesses in this world are ready to pay the top buck for it. Better the data, better and more precise the advertisement. Now what is this data? It's your name, your age, your gender, your phone number, your education, your relationship status and even your political affiliation. And if they manage your salary and health data too, then they can make their ads a compulsive click for you. It's not just companies like Google and Facebook that are collecting and mining your data. The main players in this field are the data brokers. These are specialized companies or individuals that are scraping your data from public records and sometimes even privately sourced. They collect, aggregate, sort and present this data for the companies to use. This data is collected from the apps and search engines that you use. Obviously, it is not an easy job and that is why your data comes at a high price. If you think, what's the harm in collecting data to target the user with better and customized ads, then you need to look beyond it. Your data will not just determine the ads you see, but it will also have an influence on that new job or a new loan you have applied for or the marriage proposal you sent. When you are subjected to background verification, this data comes in handy for those who are checking on you. If you value privacy and are wondering how you can reduce your digital exposure, then honestly, you don't have much control over who uses your data. 
You could limit its collection, but that could hamper your internet usage experience. But still, there are some things you can do. You can check all the permissions given to all the apps on your phone and change them to suit your privacy concerns. When an app or a website asks for permission, then don't just randomly hit OK. Read and review these permissions and then customize them. VPN is also a good option. It masks your IP address and encrypts your online activities. And for those who wish to take extreme measures, there are some companies that will delete your data for a fee, like Privacy Duck. Anyway, I will wrap this video with an appeal to throw caution to the winds and go ahead and comment what you think about privacy in the digital age. And also please like and subscribe our YouTube channel so that you don't miss any videos from us and the algorithm doesn't have to work too hard to show you what you really enjoy.